Hey folks, Jimmy Boyd here, working on becoming a director, and today I have the honor of interviewing Mr. Steve Park, who has done quite a few films. We're out here at the OB Film Festival, and we're going to ask him some questions. And I hope you enjoy. I'm going to make a little production out of this. Enjoy. So Steve, tell me a little bit about your background in mm -hmm. directing and how you got started and what your plans are for the future. Well, I went to film school. Uh, every great director starts in film school, Spielberg, you know, all those guys, film school. That's the biggest part of any career is going to school. Uh, you don't always have to go to film school, but especially if you want to be a director, you got to go to film school. And then, you know what, you just got to work your way into the Southern California, Los Angeles scene. Are you okay, bud? Yeah, I'll be fine. Okay. Continue, continue, please. Yeah, you know what, and I, I come out here on days like this, and I just get inspiration. You know, you've got cars going by, you've got the sun in the sky, birds. There's no birds right now, but they're in the air, no question. And, you know, you just get inspiration, a dog out of a window, that could be a whole new TV series. You never know what's going to happen. Now, Steve, what would you say to people that haven't been to film school that want to get into directing? I would say that's where you've got to start. You know, you have to go to school. Or you know what? You don't even have to go to school. Just go follow directors around. You know, you're doing the right thing. You're following me around. I've got big things coming out. I've got what? movies, what? I've got uh, TV shows. I mean, dude. I've done a lot of different stuff. Uh, you know, I, I've done so many different things I can't even remember them all. I've been <laughs> in film festivals, I've been on the internet, I've been on YouTube. Um, I've got, you know, hundreds of, of hundreds of, of hundreds of hits on YouTube. And you know, you hear a lot about Hollywood stars having big, big egos and uh, the actors and actresses, you know, they're always up and down with each other. How do you deal as the director with those types of egos? Well, it's pretty easy. You've got to have the biggest ego out of everyone. Because if there's one thing that people respect with big egos, it's someone with a bigger ego. And that's pretty much how Hollywood works. You know, you've got that loud motorcycle right there. And he's only on the streets because he's got the loudest motorcycle. Everyone respects him. You know, no one respects a, a Kia going by or something like that. It's the loudest motorcycle that wins. And I think that that's a pretty amazing metaphor for how Hollywood works. Steve, um, what do you think about that? You know, it reminds me a lot of my early days on the theater. When you've got sets, there's nothing behind it, but it's about acting. It's about the actors, and it's about the director putting you in the right spot, finding the right angle so that the audience can't tell, is that a real house? Is there something behind it? You're not really sure. So, you know, and it all comes back uh, to the director. You know, like always, they're, they're the most important part. There's so many... think about that? I think that those kids are never going to make it as directors. They're not in film school. They're not even in the school period. And I think they just have no chance to be directors, you can tell. So Steve, when it comes to handling special effects, tell me as a director, obviously that's not happening in real time, but you can see, you can see the vision. You know what's going to happen with the movie. You're setting it all up. You have to have a vision. That's where it all starts. And, you know, it, it brings me back to my days of, at the film school. It was called The Film School. And it, they teach you that in effects, special effects 101. You know, you have to start with a vision. It all comes from your head, which is why the director is so key in everything. Really, they control everything. They mold everything. The actors are there to say the words. But... You know, it's all about how the director has a vision of this guy should be saying a word and maybe something blows up in the background because he's not saying the words so well. So something else needs to happen. And so it's all about having that vision and having the foresight to be able to tell, you know, is this guy any good at acting? Maybe not, but it doesn't really matter because the director is so good that he makes everything, you know, just come to life.
Controlling the image of your movie and separating the real from what would be realistic can be really difficult. So when something like that happens to a tree, how do you control it? You know, you take things like that and you see it and you, you kind of, you do this and you start to try to put it into the perfect frame and then you measure distance. Where do I need to be? Here, there. No, maybe it's right here, a different lens. And you just take that one image and it becomes, it becomes something totally different. You know, you've got a tree with a huge branch sticking out of it and it becomes something else. It becomes a metaphor. It becomes a metaphor for life. It becomes an image that describes life. And that's how movies are made. I think that a tree, that's a tree growing out of a tree. Right. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I, I was never a botanist, but I see it. You know, sometimes I see things differently than other people, and that's just kind of the way that my brain works. I've got sort of a director's brain, and it kind of, it reminds me that the greatest director of all is God. So I've been shooting this this interview with uh, with Steve, and I've got to say it, it's been it's been inspiring, it's been moving. I think it's that it's really going to direct me in a way to being a director. All right, so back with Steve. Couldn't help but notice when I was interviewing you earlier. It was really hard to see you in some of the pictures because of the lighting and where the lighting was, where the sun was, especially in natural light, which I hear so much about. Can you explain a little bit about how lighting plays a factor into films? It's, the, it's one of the most important things that, that we, and I'm glad that you brought it up because you know, natural light is the best kind of light. And there are UV rays and those affect things in different ways. They bounce off of you know, different kinds of things, skin off of glass, off of all sorts of different things. And it's just so important to, to always be aware of your surroundings, not just the light, but also the wind. Is there too much wind? Is there not enough wind? It depends on the scene. So you've got to keep that uh, in the back of your head at all times. You know, and these are just kind of things as a director that you start to just think about naturally. Every time I walk outside, I know exactly where the light is. I know that if I'm, that's a, uh, I think I worked with him recently, the dog out of the window, he's uh, one of those um, sheltering animals, and he did pretty well. He could have done a little better, but, you know, small budget. Well, this is a little bit off topic, Steve, but I'd just like to know your thoughts on that cow. It's a really interesting piece, you know, art can inspire so much, it can inspire movies, TV shows that can inspire, you know, different plays in the theater. It's something that maybe Shakespeare would have taken and, and twisted the words around and, and made it into something beautiful where, you know, that cow meets another cow that's maybe red and in the end they both commit suicide. Steve, why don't you give us a little scene here? We're set at Sunset Cliffs, San Diego. Why don't you set it up for us? What's going on? Well, you know, the way I see it, there are guys out here surfing right now, but you can't just go with the obvious. Because every time you go to a beach, oh, there's somebody surfing. He's got blonde hair. Big deal. In my scene, just coming off the top of my head right now, I've got aliens coming down. They're coming down. They're not surfing, but they're skiing. And they're, they have alien skis. They're not the same thing as normal skis. You know, they've got, they're green. They have antennas not out of their heads but out of the skis so that they can talk to the other skiers and that's how they travel they don't have spaceships they come in they ski out of the sky out of only when it's raining obviously and they ski down the rain onto the waves they come into shore and then they try to take over is that all i mean that's what that's the beginning of the movie the rest of the movie comes off of that okay so Steve, why don't you tell me a little bit about the films that you've been involved with and the other types of movie making. You know, throughout the years I've, I've done uh, tons of different things. I've, I've, uh, I've done, you know, Broadway stuff. Well, it's mostly been off-Broadway, but um, I mean on the other side of the country. Different streets that are called Broadway, um, theater, you know, and um, 
and I've done movies. I've done. I've been in film festivals. I've. Uh, I'm sure some of the movies that I've done, you've you've seen. Um, yeah, Can you name in, one of one or more of those? Of my movies? Yes. Yeah, I did. Uh, I did uh, the uh, um, the Palm Tree um, Inn, the Palm Tree Hotel, is what it was called actually. And it was good. I'm sure you saw it or heard about it or uh, missed that IMDb, one. Maybe you know. I'll but, check uh, it out on IMDb. Yeah. You know, well, you don't have to check it out. It's just um, you know, just take my word for it. So. Anything and, um, else, really? And, uh, and um, you know, just in, it's so inspiring to be out here, and houses, uh, you know, just I'm just inspired. So, okay, that answers that, Mr. Park. What are some things that directors have to have? What type of qualities do they have to have? You've got to be. You've got to be a personality, a type. You've got to be able, you've got to know what you want and you've got to go get it. And you've got to tell people what to do, where to be at the right time. Go ahead. How are we doing? Did you see how I told him to go ahead? Because you would have stayed back behind us if I hadn't told him, you know, go ahead. You've got a dog. That's great. You know, the dog can go too. And you have to be able to, you have to be able to interact with people and let them know that it's okay to do things sometimes, as long as I say that it's okay. I've heard you produce some of your own music. Is that correct? Yeah, I've. Uh, that's one of my side projects. You know, I try to, uh, you know, try to say uh, diverse in all the things that I do. You know, I can't just direct all the time. Steve, as we close up here, do you have any last remarks, any suggestions for future directors out there, and directors trying to get into the business? Yeah, you know, thanks for coming along today, Jimmy. Uh, you know, my only advice for future directors is it's a tough business, and, uh, you know, it's a really tough thing to do. It's probably the hardest thing to do besides maybe, you know, pro harder than being president, I think, is being a director, so uh, I guess if I could say anything, just, yep, I probably just wouldn't, wouldn't even try it, I, so just don't do it. You see it. So today was an interesting day. Uh, I learned a lot from uh, Mr. Stephen Park. He's an interesting guy, definitely one-minded, wants to be the best director there is. I learned a lot about sound effects, landscaping, UV rays, which is interesting. I never even thought about that. I also am a little bit skeptical about where he went to film school, the film school. There's no record of it. I, I mean, he's a director. You know, he's done hundreds of independent films, so I mean, he probably knows what he's doing. Uh, so yeah, I'll take what I learned today and apply it to my own directing. Thanks for watching.